Hey guys, this is Vivek and welcome to Arduino Tutorial 2. The reason I'm gonna show my face today is it's mirrored with lipstick of my chick who's pretty loving, generous and of course imaginary. Alright guys, jokes apart, let's get started, alright? Okay, in the Arduino Tutorial 1 we've learned about the basic block diagram for Arduino. It has power module with your 5 volts, 3.3 volt regulated outputs then you have your uh, ground then you have your vn all right then you have analog inputs then you have your digital input and outputs and then you have your pwm now today we're gonna shut off with this pwm now what is it we we'll look at it all right then uh, pwm stands for pulse with modulation now what exactly is this okay now since arduino cannot directly produce an analog output okay we're gonna transform a digital output into an analog output okay now as we know digital output is just low or a high or a zero or a one now let's take a look at a graph of low so low is basically like this the line runs along the x-axis so you basically have no signal it's just along x-axis now let's look at one now it's just the same except the line is parallel to the x-axis and it's at one or in arduino terms we call it at five volts now how do we transform this into analog signal let's find out now as we have seen we have our five volts and our zero so we need to get an intermediate value between five and zero all right so it's going to be an analog signal like that all right let's say we need an analog signal of 2.5 volts now uh, as you know digital pins output either zero or five so no 2.5 now how are we going to get 2.5 now let's just say or let's go by the definition pulse width modulation all right now definition of pulse just a diff digital wave something like that all right now what is width not is width of a pulse it is nothing but this distance this is the width of a pulse and what is modulation modulation is nothing but adjustment so by adjusting the width of the pulse we get the required output but half now let's say we need 2.5 volts 2.5 volts is half of 5 volts or it is in between 0 and 5 so this width is exactly made half or for the total time the digital pulse of 1 is given for half of the time so when you average it over an interval t then you get a wave like that and this will be 2.5 you need say 1.25 volts similar this wave will be on only for quarter of a second say our time period is one second so it's going to be on only for quarter of a second so ultimately analog signal much smaller one will have an amplitude of 1.25 volts so pvm is nothing but converting digital to analog by switching on and off times all right so that's it for pwm now let's ne now let's look at the next module now now that we've seen pwm now let's look at the application of pdm the most common application is motor control all right so you need to mo run the motors at different speeds all right so you need to run it at maybe you know 500 rpm 1000 rpm or maybe 10 rpm also so how do you do it now before we get into control of the motor speed using pwm let's look at the overall control of a motor how does it exactly work now say the motor it just spins clock or counterclockwise all right so say we build a robot using this so we need our robot to go forward backward left and right now left and right are pretty much derivations of the first two cases so if we are able to make our robot move forward and backward i think that serves the purpose 
so let's look at it let's look at it so basically a motor is nothing but an impedance okay so when you apply something across say a voltage across this impedance all right say you apply a v then that impedance takes and then that impedance produces a current i and that spins the spindle inside the motor and that makes our motor move now this motor as you can pretty much see it has two terminals a and b remember we never ever say a motor as a positive and a negative all right that's because it's just an impedance it resistance it has no polarity it can switch either ways it can work both ways so now if you look at it say current flows from a to b so this way all right the motor spins clockwise let's just assume it might be counterclockwise but if it spins if i mean if the voltage is applied from b to a so b is at the gated potential than a then current flows from b to a then it's gonna be counterclockwise all right so that's how is the control you switch the polarities the direction of the rotation changes all right so that's how a motor works in general now let's look at it how to control it using an arduino now as we've seen to switch polarity we use something called an hedge bridge okay uh, this hedge bridge looks like this this is the circuit of a hedge bridge now, as you can see it looks like a hedge alphabet hedge all right so we know that a motor can work both ways depending on how the current flows all right so if you're able to make it move forward and backward now forward is nothing but complementary of backward and vice versa so if the current is flowing this way then say it's moving forward if it flows the other way then it's moving backward so we must be able to control the circuit in such a way that it moves forward and backward depending on however or whichever direction we want all right so let's just look at this hedge bridge now what do you see you see 12 this end say we call it a and b are connected to 12 volts and c and d are connected to ground okay so this is at a higher uh, voltage and this is at a lower voltage so there's a potential difference in between now let's just say we just close we just close the switch s1 and we close the switch s3 and we leave s2 and oh oh my bad okay s1 this is s2 then okay so here we have s1 and s4 closed all right so 12 to 0 the current flows this manner or it moves from a to b because this is the closed circuit right so current can't flow through this branch or through this branch so it must flow using this path all right 12 to 0 volts so uh, the motor spins or in other words say the current moves from A to B and let's say the motor spins clockwise all right so we have S1 and S4 closed now similarly we open the complementary switches because as I told backward is complementary of forward we open the other two switches okay so now S1 and S4 are open and S2 and S4 are closed so you have S2 and S4 closed now as you can see by this green line the current flows through this path because this is the closed circuit we have so in a manner as you can see you can control this hedge bridge by just closing the required switches at the required time so say s1 s4 closed flows a to b say s2 s4 closed flows this way so uh, i guess i've made a mistake s2 and s3 my bad okay s2 and s3 closed it just moves this way no, no, no numbering is not that important but just check okay this and this switch closed a to b this and that switch closed it moves from uh it moves from b to a and that is counterclockwise direction so you got an idea how its bridge works right just by closing different switches different combination of switches uh we can make uh, the motor spin in either ways now also one point to remember you never supposed to close s1 and s2 that's because when you do it the battery is shorted right 12 volts and ground directly connected all right so that should never be the case so generally what people do is they put a diode here 
so that the conduction only takes place using that path the i path okay the red line or the green line all right so always remember s1 and this or this and that should be closed accordingly so that is how next bridge works we'll look at it in detail in next uh, few lectures but for as of now h bridge is enough now let's look at l293 d which is an ic made of h bridge all right here we have the block diagram or the ic diagram of l293 d which is a h bridge one we have learned in the last slide motor control ic okay integrated circuit now this is your simple ic as you've seen a digital logic lab it has uh, 16 pins eight on this side eight on that side interesting part is the internal uh, connections have been made so depending on the input provided to that it changes the polarity all right so this is motor one connected across pin 3 and pin 6 and motor 2 connected across pin 11 and pin 14 okay this is fixed for every L293D whichever you take and there are other versions which might differ slightly so this is the most common version all right so L293D 16 pin IC so let's look at what each pin mean okay so say the pin 1 pin 1 is basically enable all right then uh, pin 2 is input A I A then pin input uh, I mean pin 3 is connected across motor then pin 4 and 5 are shorted and connected to ground all right so pin 6 is the other terminal of the motor now pin 7 is input B and pin 8 is something called unregulated voltage now this is the voltage on which the motor is gonna run so whatever we you can call it as VCC all right so whatever you have to give you can give it so normally this is rated at around 12 or say 9 to 36 volts so you can power this IC from 9 to 36 volts like in the sense you can give unregulated voltage of 9 to 36 volts where the positive of the battery is connected to pin number 8 and negative connected to the ground so 9 to 36 eh, more than you give it you know mishappenings can happen all right so then we'll move to 9 now this is enable 2 all right say so this pin number 1 is enable 1 this is enable 2 this is input C then this is connected to the motors 11 and 14 now 13 and 12 are shorted and connected to ground similar to 4 and 5 then this is our input T and finally this is our unregulated voltage again all right now let's look at this it has two parts all right the left and the right side all right if your power enable is equal to 5 volts or you give it to logic 1 all right so this part of the circuit works all right so you give this enable to pin number nine to logic one this part of the circuit works so you can make both parts of the circuit work at the same time so normally you give one and nine as logic one all right so now uh, this is the circuit i can see it's all symmetric i a i d i b i c e two motor terminals grounds everything all right now let's see how does this motor work m1 all right so we need to spin it either in the clock or in the anti-clockwise direction now as a matter like as a matter of fact or the way it works now if ia is equal to one and ib is equal to zero it spins in clockwise direction now if ib is equal to one and ia is equal to zero it spins in the opposite direction so this ia and ib can be connected to your Arduino and these values can be outputted using the digital output so this is connected to digital output pins of your Arduino and instructions are given so 1 0 clockwise 0 1 anti-clockwise all right those are the instructions then similar to this also is the same way 1 0 clockwise 0 1 anti-clockwise all right motor 2 so this is how these four are your arduino outputs okay now this unregulated voltage as i've told you it's 9 to 36 volts and enable now you might be wondering we long forgotten about pwm how does pwm play a role in this now all right this is to change the polarity and everything but you have seen something enable one all right this enable one if it is connected logic high this side will work but say if it's connected to 2.5 volts then 
that will make the motor spin at half its speed okay so this e1 and e2 are connected to your pwm pins on your arduino all right so uh, if you look, look at it in a nutshell in l293d it has four ground points then it has two vcc points that is eight and pin 16 connected to unregulated voltage and you have two enables then you have two motor uh, terminal pins then you have your four inputs all right so these four inputs connected to arduino digital out nine and one enables connected to your pvm to control the mode speed and eight and 16 connected to the unregulated voltage all right so these are the logical diagram this is a logical diagram pin diagram and uh, you can know how it works in future slides so for as of now this is a basic introduction to ic l293d now you might be thinking uh, all right so much of theory now it's boring all right let's get down to the practical part of it now you've understood pwm uh, one sec okay you know pwm you know how to control a motor using a hedge bridge ic so now let's go down to the business all right so the first robot we ever made was line follower robot this is a very simple robot where there's a line of fixed thickness all right this black line here it's of fixed thickness and it has curves smooth curves rectangular bands everything okay your robot uh, it should be autonomous meaning not controlled by humans it should be just programmed and kept so that it will follow the line whichever the line it is it's gonna follow say a track is like this it should start from here and come back here and never go out of the path all right so it has to be along the path it has to move along the path and come back all right so that is how what's a line follow robot is so how does this work all right so you have a line of thickness so if you look at the front of the robot there are two sensors two ir sensors all right so these ir sensors are exactly placed at the same thickness as the line all right so these th these ir sensors are basically on the white part of the board all right so normally when the track is like this the external part is made white now this is white this is thick black all right so pretty distinguishable that's the contrast all right so it should be at the fixed distance fixed thickness same as the line now the ir sensor senses a white line here also it senses a white path all right so when it senses white path it moves forward say the robot comes a little bit on this line meaning say the s2 sensor is on the black line all right so that means it has to move the opposite way all right so it just moves to the right direction all right we'll go into the detail of this but in a nutshell what happens is along the line there are two sensors they sense white and say this sensor comes onto this line then input is given to the arduino and the motor moves in the opposite direction all right say if the right sensor is on the line the robot will move left if left sensor is on the line the robot will move right so that is the basic principle of how it works so we're gonna look into detail we're gonna find out how it you know how the values are and everything but this is just the basic sketch all right so i guess another one lecture one and a half lecture uh, you'll you'll know how to make your robot so all right folks so get your uh, robo kits ready let's build something cool and uh, thanks for watching we're back here bye bye